Hey, my name's Jonathan. I'm a fifth year mechanical engineering student at the University of Alberta. I select the University of Alberta because I've always been an Edmonton kid, born and raised. It's awesome seeing my family every once in a while in person when they come to visit me on campus. In terms of why I chose engineering, I always knew I wanted to do some sort of engineering. Uh, so first, they, there was like a general first year program where yet a whole smattering of different courses and from there I figured out that I really like the dynamics courses. I, I really liked how, seeing how things moved and how things worked. So I, I just went into mechanical. Beyond academics, I think the whole engineering faculty, especially the people in your program, they all are friends, they're friendly. You know, whether or not it's a personal problem or if it's a school problem, you, you can always rely on the people around you to help you out or help you through it, especially people in upper years that'll, that have a little bit more experience and have seen a little bit more, right? They're gonna be totally willing to hear you out and, you know, l lend a shoulder or a brain, depending on what you need. Well, most courses have three parts to them. Lectures, labs, and assignments. Lectures are where concepts are first explained. Um, the prof gets up to the podium, goes through the theoretical information, maybe does a simple example here or there, and then moves on. It moves very quickly. Uh, even missing one lecture makes it very hard to catch up in the course without doing at least the same amount of work on your own time. Labs are often mandatory, and there's um, often lab assignments associated with them, but usually the lab assignments are done within the lab period, and the labs go slow enough that you're able to ask the teaching assistants, or TAs, for help and get all your work done within the lab. The labs are really meant to give you a practical experience for what you're learning in the lecture and kind of deepen your understanding from it. The assignments kind of combine the lab and the lecture. It takes the information from both the lab and the lecture and creates a challenging problem set that often takes multiple different approaches to solve. Additionally, most courses have office hours. These aren't mandatory, but they're really useful to help catch up, especially if like you miss a lecture and you're just not understanding exactly what the professor's talking about in their notes, or if you're just generally struggling. The prof won't go through and reteach an entire lecture, but as long as you've done like a, a good amount of work, they're almost always willing to help fill in some gaps in your understanding, even if those gaps are really big. In order to succeed, I think the biggest thing is that you're going to have to have a mindset that allows you to take multiple approaches, to critically think of a problem and logically on connect the ideas that are taught in the lectures and in the labs and in the course in general. In terms of content, it really depends on what program you go into. For mechanical engineering, there's a lot about how machines move, how materials act when they're acted on, and a lot of how fluid flows and how we can use that flow to do work. For us. There's a lot of design, there's a lot of like understanding the trade-offs and benefits of different approaches and different designs. But I guess one thing that might be similar for all of the programs is that you, a lot of the design is going to connect and extend ideas that you learn in class and that you'll have to take different approaches to get to a final design that really solves the problem at hand. Once you get in your program, almost all of the courses are going to be you have to take a specific course. There are a few options, maybe a half dozen to a dozen, which will let you choose between a couple electives, but all of these are courses that are kind of handpicked by the university to help you learn some specific skills for a specific industry. So whatever. So if you see a course that's an elective that you really like or that seems really easy, I'd suggest you go for it. Not because it seems easy, because you like it, but because 
you're going to be interested in it and it might help you throughout your career. Um, in terms of high, what you can do now in high school, you can uh, go above and beyond in all of your required courses, physics, math, calculus, chemistry, and English, not just to get a high average, which will help you get into the university, but to extend your knowledge for when you are in university and the concepts get a lot harder. Uh, it's good to have a little bit of a jump start on that. In terms of uh, registering for courses, in first year your courses are like literally set to you and given to you, so you just have to hope to get a really good schedule. When you're allowed to choose your courses in second year and further, uh, I suggest taking as few night classes as possible and as few 8 a.m. classes as possible. You're going to thank yourself later because it sounds good, but it really doesn't work. In terms of like studying for the program, I, I always study with friends and I study by doing a lot of practice questions. Practice questions really often look really similar to the exams and if I ever need help, I always ask for it as soon as possible. Ask like your classmates because if they don't know, then they really should know and it'll help both of you. It, and if your classmates don't know, have all your classmates and yourself go and ask a prof because the prof has to know, right? Otherwise, the other tip I'd say is to do the assignments and do them very thoroughly because the assignments are, re are given by the prof and they're really close to what the exam looks like. In terms of other study tips or other tips that I'd use in first year, I actually made a two-sheet guide on what I wish I would have known in first year and lots of tips that I could have used and a lot of tips that I've gathered from other people that they could have used. They only really look at your grade 12 averages for your five core subjects, math, calculus, physics, chemistry, and English. In these five subjects, I think the averages usually are high 80s to low 90s to get in. There's no written portion, there's no uh, interview type style, it's just your grades. In terms of scholarships, I know grade 12 is a s super busy year and that scholarships are kind of the furthest thing from your mind for a lot of the year, but if you have enough energy, apply for every scholarship that you think you can apply for and then uh, do as good as you can on the ones you apply for. Scholarships such as the Rutherford, where there's no limit on the amount of students that can get it, <coughs> are really easy, really easy to get because it just requires a grade point average of above 80, I believe. Other scholarships to go for are ones specific to engineering. When you do apply for scholarships, try to be really personal, try to make your application stand out, give it a little bit of flair, and if and try to impress the people reading it. In terms of like a job market and job prospects, engineers can do a lot across a lot of industries. Like every industry des involves design, involves planning, involves balancing different stakeholders, values. It's just really wide. During uh, your degree, you can do the co-op program and a little shout out because I was in it. Uh, you get lots of work experience um, during your degree and you get to test out different industries and figure out what you might or might not want to do in the future as an engineer so that you can kind of get a jump start on your career. In terms of like on-campus living, I lived in Lister Hall on the engineering floor in first year. so. Everybody on that floor was in engineering first year, and everybody helped each other out immensely. Like, not just academically, but like emotionally and mentally. It was, it was great. Also, like, Lister Dodgeball is the best. Just gotta give a shout out there. It's amazing if you ever go in residence, you, you should definitely try it out. In engineering, uh, it's work hard, play hard if you want to. There's a huge party scene where you can go drinking with your buddies, you can go out to a house party, but everybody understands it's 100% optional and that getting your work done and passing your courses is the number one priority of a university. 
in terms of going to different spots, uh, there's a lot of different buildings that you can hang out at, uh, ETLC, NREF for studying, uh, Cab, Sub and Hub are just good general places to hang out with everyone. Club rooms in the Dice 8th floor are a great place to meet people and uh, to hang out and either study or, you know, goof around. I'd suggest getting in involved in your program club. Um, just say hi, meet some upper years, trade some experiences. Other than that, get involved in a club that you that you uh, find interesting. Uh, I really like the chess club. It's a great group of people. I've learned a lot in both chess and in real or other information. In terms of making friends, I would just you know awkwardly say hi within a lecture in a lecture or say I, I don't even know what the hell's going on to the person beside me and a lot of times you make a friend for life just by uh, making the first move being a little bit more vulnerable right you know if you have an extra calculator and you offer it to someone else that's frantically looking for one in an exam that you've you've made a best friend for life with them it, it, it's a great culture in, you know, in university and there's a great culture in engineering where everybody knows everybody's struggling so everybody wants to help each other out and be friendly. There's a lot of help for students from financial to mental to emotional help um, but when you're in university and especially in first year it can be really overwhelming so I think the best help is going to be something called the Peer Support Center. It's where you can go there, take a 10, 20 minute mental and emotional break, talk with someone in just casually, and then recenter yourself. From there, you can get directed to a lot more and a lot more specific help that the university provides. And they then they're happy to do it free of charge. First year is a crazy amount of work. And engineering in general is a crazy amount of work, but it's also a crazy amount of fun as well. Do your best. Don't, don't be afraid to ask for help. Don't get disheartened and have fun. <laughs>